All right, we're going to be doing our low poly uh, alleyway in Japan, and uh, best thing to do is look at reference foot, you know, reference source images for this. And uh, I keep seeing this crate in there, and it really adds a cool little vibe to it. Um, so uh, just go and Google Kieran crate, and the first thing we're going to do is model this little yellow crate. Uh, so the first thing we need to do within Maya is go to project window, start new, click new, and then we'll say alley Japan. Uh, and then you can select where you want it to go. I'm just going to select documents and just click accept and it will build those folder paths then I'll go to file and I'll set my project to that folder we just made and it'll line up this project with all of those folder paths um, so then everything should be set up so when you go back to Safari to save this image I'm gonna right click on the image save image as I'm going to bring it into Alley Japan Source Images. Click New Folder, name it Image Planes, create it, and then I'll rename it before I save it here in Crate to store all my image planes in there and source images. And then I'm going to uh, back in Maya, hit Spacebar to bring up my quad view and in the front panel I'm going to go to view image plane import image and you can see it's popped right up to source images because we set the, the folder and built those uh, folder paths I'm going to click image planes I'm going to click Kieran crate I'm going to import it and it imports um, a plane with the image on it so here's my grid line right here it's a little off center so I'm going to move it over a little bit to where this is perfectly centered and then rotate it I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it it doesn't need to be perfect something about like that Then I'm gonna rotate it just a bit something like that um, and then to see the exact measurements, I'm going to come and click my channel box up here, right? Because if we're in modeling standard, the channel box isn't there by default. So I'm going to grab this and place it where my attribute editor is because it's going to come in handy. Um, and then you can see that my measurements are negative uh, 1.52 and 0.382 for rotate Z. Uh, so then I'm going to, in my outline, I'm going to bring my outliner up so I can kind of have something be able to select things. And I'm going to uh, press move, move this back out of my way so I can kind of use this space right here. And then with my channel box also selected, I'm going to, uh, with the image plane selected, come down here to this button where, where it says create a new layer and assign selected objects. When I click that in my display under my channel box, this layer one is going to be created. If my image plane is selected, it's in that layer now. So I'll click layer one, double click it, and then rename it image planes. And that's going to let me put all my image planes I work with this scene uh, into this layer and be able to kind of control them from there. So I'm going to click save. It's now named image planes. And in this third little box, I can hit T. If I click it once, it'll go to T. If I click it twice, it'll go to R for reference. So what that's doing is if I click off of my image plane and I try to select it, I can't. Which is going to be good for when we're modeling. We won't be accidentally selecting this. I can still select it from my image, uh, from my outliner if I want to. But when I'm working on this, it's not going to get in my way. Um, so then I'll click my outliner, minimize it. I'm going to come to this view right here and just bring in a, uh, a cube. I'm going to go to my wireframe mode right here so I can see what I'm kind of doing. I'm just going to stretch it 
and I'm just paying attention to this side because we're going to just be building this uh, in you know a quarter of it and then mirroring it so something about like that is good and then I'm going to go hit spacebar to go back into my quad view and then on this side on the side view I'm going to scale it just on the Z. If you saw the reference photos, it's not nearly as deep as it is wide, so something about like that'll do. Um, and then I'm going to come on to this opposite side. I'm just going to be working on this little quarter right here. And so I'm just I'm going to delete this, delete this back, and I'm going to delete this top. Or I just have something that looks like that. Um, I'll come over to my modeling toolkit. Right, so I was just holding right mouse button to select the faces and everything. Um, but I'll, you can also work for your modeling toolkit. So I'm going to grab the vertexes uh, and then click up here on Snap to Grids. When I click that and I select my vertices, I'm going to hit Move or press. Maybe you should remember W E R. Uh, your, those hotkeys, and when I start to move this over on the X, it's snapping, and now it's perfectly snapped in the center. I'm going to grab these back ones from the side and do the same thing. I'm going to grab this Z and then move it to where it's right in the center. So now I'm just working on this one little, this quarter right here. Uh, so now I'm just going to cut, uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go into my outliner. I can see better. I'm going to hit this image plane and go back to my channel box and lower this alpha gain to like 0.2 so I can see what I'm actually doing. Uh, I'm going to grab my uh, start working on my little quarter right here by going into the modeling toolkit multi cut. And I'm just going to hit, uh, uh, sometimes you have to like uh, start clicking on it to get it to register on, on this window, on whatever window you're working with. Um, so I just click that and then undid it. And then now I'm just going to hold down control. And, oh, it's on grid. So make sure you turn off grid when you start to work with the multi-cut tool. So with this... I'm just going to, I just hit space bar and went into that front view. I'm just going to place these cuts where they need to be. Hmm, is that the top? No, that's, okay, so that's good. And then... All right, so I just made, this is gonna be wh what we cut out, and then all these little ledges right here are what I just cut in with that multi-cut tool. All the things that we're gonna have to bevel are the things uh, that I just put those in. So I'm gonna come back out by pressing space bar, and then I'm just gonna eyeball this side one, where I kinda think it would be, maybe like there. Then I got to double it, right? Because I got we're gonna have to bevel that as well. All right, so that's gonna be my little you know side over there. So I can come into my uh, face mode and then select this and then select this. And I can delete these. I don't need them anymore. Um, so this is the corner that we're gonna be working on. I'm gonna double click the entire thing. I'm going to extrude. And I'm going to negatively extrude it. And when I do that, everything turns black. I'm going to negatively extrude it to 0 0.1. And it's doing that because uh, the polygons only have one surface. And now that I've made it go negative, all of them have flipped around. And they're facing inwards on each other. So I'm going to hit select to finalize that. I'm going to select the entire, double click to select every face on this model. And I'm going to go up to mesh display and just click reverse. And this will reverse that. So if ever if you're ever working on a model and for some reason you have a, a polygon that's black, 
and you can't seem to change the color of it, it's probably reversed. And you might need to like select it and go up to Mesh Display and reverse it. Um, all right, so that's good. I'm going to go and grab the edge component and double click on this to loop select all of this. Then I'm going to bevel this. Uh, I'm going to make the segments two and I'll make the fraction like point seven or point six. That looks good. And then I'll click uh, selection to finalize that. <clears throat> and then I'm going to select all of these little faces that I'm going to extrude except for this right here because you can see on the on the photo that it's not that's the only place it doesn't kind of have a bevel it's got these little other architectural things that we're going to do um, actually before I do that let me go in and delete these faces because when we mirror everything we don't want these faces here so I'm going to go in and select all of these delete them I want these to stay there but the ones where the lo little cross section is we want to delete those All right, so deleted those, so now we're mirror, then they're gonna be there. Oh, here's a little one that's trying to re remain. You're gone, dude, you're gone. All right, so now I'm going to select uh, this face and then the one right next to it, I'm gonna double click. Um, I'm gonna select this face and then the one right above it, I'm gonna double click. So I'm just holding shift this entire time. So before I make this new selection, I'm holding shift with that little plus sign comes up clicking to select it and then still holding shift I'm going to come up here and double click the one right above it to loop select I'll select this one next to it I'll select this one next to it and if this is kind of um, if you're having a hard time doing this just know you got to kind of get used to it you can even go in and select them all individually if you want to okay so I've selected all the little cross cuts that we made except for the ones right here. I'm going to leave those as they are. I'm going to extrude this, go to a thickness of 0.1. That's good. Oh, okay. What is happening there? Oh, look at this. So we didn't deselect these, so I'm going to undo this extrude. And I'm going to come to this top view here. And I'm going to uh, go into wireframe mode so we can see this. I'm going to hold control down and then drag out here and then hold control and just click these. Oh, I'll just keep our key select. Holding control down to deselect these because I don't want to extrude those. So now these are not selected, just uh, the ones on the side. So I'll extrude these now to 0.1. That's what I want. Okay, so that's kind of, we're getting there, we're almost there. So the next thing I'm going to do is add these little, uh, this little cut here and then this little, little slanted thing. So I'm going to go up to my edge and select this edge. I'm going to select this, 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 and this. So... The one, two, three, four, five edges. And then I'm going to bevel these, but I'll bring them down to like three, point three. And then I'll do the select tool to lock those in. And then, so you can see we have in guides now here, here, here. Uh, so to get rid of those, I'm going to, and then we have one up here as well. So to get rid of those, uh, you know, we're just going to go in and target weld this to this. So that gets rid of that. And then we're going to use the multi-cut tool, right? We're going to click on the edge, slide it over to where that highlights. Click on this edge, slide it down to where it gets there. Press enter. And we're just going to keep repeating that. Click slide it. Uh, click slide it, click slide it, enter, click slide it, click slide it, 
enter. That gets rid of that. We'll come up here to this, uh, to these ingons right here. God damn it. Right here and here. And I'll target well this to that to get rid of that. Uh, we do have an end gun here. Might as well get the practice getting this up in order. So same thing. Click, drag to the click, drag to the point, click, drag to the point, hit enter. Click, drag to the point, click, drag to the point, hit enter. Um, all right, so that's all kind of done. And now we got these little areas, uh, face areas that we can extrude. Um, I'm gonna actually put one more, you know what, I'm gonna put one more uh, multi-cut right about here, because it doesn't go all the way up. It goes up about right there. Okay. And then I will grab this face and oh, I'll put one more. I got to put one more uh, loop cut here where this bottom slant is. So right about there. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is work on this little part here and that's going to be easy. I'm just going to grab it. Let me, let me look at the reference real quick. Does it go all the way up? No, okay, it does tuck in. All right, so th this is good. Um, I will grab this and move it up a little closer because it is a little closer. And now I'm gonna grab this face and extrude it the single face, just pull it out a little bit, and then on the, then I'll hit R, and then just scale it on the, the R, right, on the, uh, the Y. That's good. And that's all I need to do for that. It's kind of out far. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to redo that. I'm going to go back in redo it. So I'm going to undo, I'm going to hit extrude, maybe pull it out to you know, just a little bit, something like that. And then bring that down. All right, so that's that little part there on the crate, right there. Uh, and then this last little part where the, the angle is. So I'm going to grab this, same thing, extrude. This one's a little trickier. I'm going to grab it, pull it out, and then pull it up so I can so just pull it out and then up. And then I'm just going to select the faces here and here and delete these faces. And then target weld with the edge, this edge to this edge. And then I will select this face and delete that face. And then target weld. I'm just pressing right mouse button, holding it down, selecting that edge. And then I'll just grab this set, right? So the target weld is you select target weld, hover over the edge or points, click in and drag to the edge you want to weld it to and then I'll just weld that okay so that is the crate um, I'll come up here and make it a harder edge so it's a little bit more low poly um, so that's it that's what we that's the uh, it's pretty much done I'm just gonna mirror it now so I'm gonna just select my object Click mirror, and since in the channel box it's all at zero here and zero there, and we didn't move any of the pivot points, it's lining up. 
So mirrored it on the x-axis and then hit select to finalize that. Select this object again, mirror it again, and then go to access uh, and then left mouse button, uh, drag it to where it goes to Z and then hit select to finalize it and that's our crate. I can right mouse button, go to assign new material, come down to Arnold shader, come down to AI standard surface. This is the one we're going to be using for all of class, so AI standard surface. Um, and then to get to it, you can see all this garbage that is in Maya. I'm going to come up to edit, delete all by type, history, and then that will get rid of that and clean up this. And then I'll go to AI standard surface, color, and I will make it, uh, let it come up like that. And I'll make it a little orange, yellowish color. A bit more orange. And then that's it. So that's our little crate. We'll texture it later. We'll make some beer and texture the beer as well for the next uh, tutorial. Um, so that's our little crate. And if you look at it in Arnold, we'll add uh, under the Arnold tab if you want to add a physical sun to look at it. It's, uh, it's pretty good. So um, that's our little crate. We texture it to look even better and then from far away you can see it's you know it's kind of low poly but it looks you know it's a good little crate. Um, all right, so that's it. Uh, next we'll be texturing it and making some bottles and populating the crate with that and making some lamps. So stay tuned, save. Alley underscore one, and that's it.